most of your retailers are going to do at least 20 years because they, they're going to lay out the capital that they have to depreciate over that time period. And that's really what it boils down to. And then, you know, you can do like a PUD, you know, you can do a land lease PUD where you, you know, own the land, you lease it to a developer for 99 years and they come in and they develop everything and it's a master lease. You can do it with buildings. You know, you can take a building and, and do a master lease on a building. And, you know, so there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but yeah, it really depends on the tenant. Generally a retail tenant's going to want to be at least 20 years because every location is going to be different. I mean, if it's an urban location, that's going to be a way different contemplation than a suburban location. You know, if it's high rise garden style, I mean, there's a lot of factors that, that go into that, you know, uh, in terms of, of of that number, so really there is no rule of thumb. Uh, you know, I mean, some like garden style will have a rule of thumb. Some high rise stuff may have a rule of thumb. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, just a broad one that covers all types. Uh, there yeah. isn't going to be any kind of rule of thumb. You know, generally for me, I just take, hey, what's the building worth? Was it cost me to build? Was it cost me to develop it? That leaves me, you know, a a basis in the land. And then I back out a margin for a profit and that gives me a raw land. It doesn't, it's all the same. So some markets, the they just look at it that way. Some look at it by the acre, you know, depending on the type of land where it is like industrial, a lot of times they use square foot numbers uh, versus acreage. Uh, okay. Some people just use pad numbers, some use per door. Uh, it's just, it's kind of all over the map when you're in rural, rural locations of people that just do land flipping, uh, you know, yeah. just the wholesale land flipping and they're going after rural parcels, you know, 20, 30, 50 miles outside the city center. A lot of times they'll they'll look at you know either depending on the size of the parcel parcel either square foot or acreage prices so it all works the same you're just doing math yeah. you know square just foot calculation acre. there's so many square foot right. in an acre so you know it is what right. it is yeah kind of like leasing like an industrial a lot of times they'll they'll break it down you know uh, by the square foot you know in terms of leases versus you know uh, different different ways of doing it you know it's it's really interesting. Yeah, so, you know, every, again, every market's going to be different. So you just re really need to understand your market, what the demands are, but generally recession proof, recession resistant assets in, in the world of real estate are going to be housing number one. Everybody's got to have a roof over their head. So there's going to be a demand for that. Uh, the question is, you know, what is that demand? What are people's ability to buy? And what does the, you know, inventory look like in the area? Uh, the next thing is going to be self storage. You know, there's always demand for self storage. They they tend to weather recessions well, and then of course mobile home parks are always good as well. The things that are going to take the biggest hits in a recession are going to be office, commercial, retail, you know, hospitality, those types of things. Because business, you know, a recession by definition is a contraction, you know, in business. But people still need to eat. So grocery stores are going to do well. People still need to go to the doctor, the dentist, and really, we had a really good experiment with the pandemic because you found out what's a real essential business. You know, who stays open in the worst possible scenario? And again, you had to put gas in your car if you were, you know, that had to stay open. You had to buy food. You know, you had to get medical care. Um, you know, you had to get dental became sort of essential, sort of non. That was interesting. You know, medical, dental, op, you know, optometrist, things like that, you would think wouldn't have had, wouldn't have had to close, but a lot of them did. And even, you know, elective surgeries were canceled and things like that. So that was interesting. Because I've always I've always looked at medical and dental as you know, recession proof, and you know people always need that stuff done, uh, but they're not pandemic proof. Right. So you know I would look at what did well in that environment. And that kind of gives you an indication. But again, it's all going to be market specific, and there's there's big demands in certain markets right now for housing and for multifamily units and all that. And then there's areas that are tanking, uh, you know. So like San Francisco, for instance, they're going through a transition right now. That used to be one of the hottest, you know, most in demand markets in the country, and now it's kind of going the other way. We saw that happen in New York during the pandemic. Now it's coming back, uh, you know, so you just need to understand your market and what you're looking for and what the demand is and then where the market is in the cycle. So, you know, we're, we're coming over the, you know, coming over the cliff right now. We're rounding the top in the market. So when you look at a market like Austin, Texas, house prices are adjusting rapidly there and that market is going through one of the biggest corrections in the country. So if you're going to be a spec builder, you know, or a house flipper, or a land flipper, you just need to understand, well, where are the values now? If the market is correcting, how fast is it correcting? And if this sold for $300,000 last month, it might only sell for 250 this month, so you need to buy at 200 so you can make that profit. You need to be quick, you know, if it's a quick in and out type of thing, but if it's a, you know, entitlement deal and it's long-term, and, you know, this land may be worth a million now, fully entitled, but a year from now, if the economy contracts, it might only be worth half a million. So that means I can only pay, you know, X amount of dollars based on where it's going to be a year from now. So you just got to stay ahead of the contraction, just like you stay ahead of, you know, uh, the opposite. So as markets are expanding and prices are going up, 
then you want to anticipate that, you know, so you can be more aggressive and say, well, I sold for 200 here, you know, last month, it'll probably sell for 250 this month. So I can pay a little bit more to be competitive and kind of ride the market up. So you just want to make sure you pay attention to, you know, properties for sale, how long they've been for sale, you know, what's under contract, how long they, how long were they on the market and what are properties selling for, you know, asking price to sale price, you know, what's that discount or what's that premium, you know, above or below. So those are the things that you really have to be in tune with as, as an expert in this business. You just need to know those things in your market or markets, you know, without having to look at anything. You just got to constantly be, you know, keeping yourself up to date with that.